What's up, everybody? We are back. John Delarose here, the leading Hispanic voice in science fiction. Coming at you with another review. The last review we did was an epic collection, which was uh, volume four of the Fantastic Four. And in that, it develops the Inhuman Saga. And so I actually continued on here, as I don't have volume five yet, it doesn't come in, uh, with the Inhumans, which is a big trade called Beware the Inhumans. This is written by Stan Lee, Jack Kirby, Roy Thomas, got some Neil Adams in it. Got quite a bit of talent in this book. And this book is actually the second Inhumans book. So they, they're not doing complete collections or epic collections with the Inhumans. I don't know why. They're just making these big trades. The first one's called Inhumans Origins, and that actually covers the material in Fantastic Four Epic Collections Volumes 3 and 4. So uh, if you want to know what happened in that, you can read, watch my reviews of those. I didn't pick that volume up, obviously, because I just read those. So um, I started with this one, and this goes into some interesting material. It collects Marvel Superheroes 15, Incredible Hulk Annual Number 1, and then it gets back into Fantastic Four with 81 through 83, which is going to be in the Epic Collection Volume 5, 99, uh, and of course, then there's some material from 95 and 105, and those should be collected in the Epic Collection Volume 6, which I believe is dropping later this year. I think in 105 might not be in there, but uh, the others will be for sure. Um, it also collects Amazing Adventures 1 through 10. Now, Amazing Adventures is the second volume to bear that name, and they did two features during that time, uh, through 1 through 10. They had a Black Widow feature for half the book, and then they had this for half the book. And so I primarily bought this because I've read the Black Widow via the Epic Collections, and I wanted to finish off the book. After number 10, uh, it picks up and runs a storyline with the Beast through issue 17, and then it picks up a, a, a character called Killraven, and I bought the Marvel Masterworks of that uh, to complete this entire series of... Uh, Amazing Adventures from, from 1970. Very interesting stuff. And it's got a parody issue of Not Brand Eck, Volume 12. All right. So it starts off with this uh, quick deal with uh, in Marvel Super Heroes 15. And uh, this is written by Archie Goodwin, of all people. He usually does mostly DC stuff. And he did this adventure right here. Uh, and Gene Colan, uh, who is a big-time Marvel guy, uh, drew this. And it's just got Medusa working for the Inhumans, and she wants to, uh, you know, help Black Bolt, basically. But not the Inhumans. She's working for the uh, Frightful Four. And she returns to her Frightful Four and eventually gets rescued by Black Bolt. It's a very nice issue. Archie Goodwin always tells just a solid tale. I love the way that Jim uh, Gene Colan draws Medusa. Just very well-done stuff. Gets into a Hulk annual which is very interesting also. And this is a very long story uh, by Stan Lee. And uh, yeah, I get, oh, I'm sorry, it's by Gary Friedrich um, and Marie Severin, who drew a bunch of Hulk back in the day also. And Hulk basically crashes in the Inhumans area uh, in their little secret hideaway. And the evil Inhumans, Maximus and his group, uh, and they develop a lot more characters uh, for Maximus and his group in this story proper, who then... Uh, get brought back later, uh, use the Hulk uh, to like stir chaos and try to take over the throne from Black Bolt. Very good story. I've read this before in the Hulk epic collection also. And I didn't skip over this one this time. I just I just read it again. There's this secret weapon of old Inhumans, and, and uh, they use Hulk to try to get him. Hulk uh, is actually welcome to stay with the Inhumans, but he's all sad and all that, and he's like, this is not the place for me. Hulk has no friends. Gotta go smash. Um, and then I actually, I skipped over reading uh, issues 81 through 83 here because I'm going to be reading that in the Epic Collection as soon as it arrives. I'd much rather read this in the context of the Fantastic Four than of this. And you basically just get some stuff with uh, Crystal and Johnny Storm building their relationship in here. Uh, so it's, it's not as much an inhuman story as it is a Fantastic Four story. And that continues on here. You get a couple appearances by them, of course. But... It's more Fantastic Four. All right. Uh, it skips here to 99. And uh, beautiful Jack Kirby art again. And I'm just uh, I'm just rolling over this because I'm going to read these in the... Uh, oh, uh, I'm going to read these in the whole 
uh, Fantastic Four context, which will be more fun for me. But it's, it's this is the best of comics right here. If you guys want anything, and you, if you don't have the Fantastic Four volumes and you're not planning on getting them, just, just read these because this is the best of comics. It really is. Uh, the Jack Kirby Fantastic Four of this era is just out of control good. Now we get to Amazing Adventures, and this is very interesting too because Jack Kirby actually wrote and drew this, so he got the full credit for doing this. And it starts off with a the Inhumans getting attacked by commies, um, and the Mandarin is is uh, involved in this, and the Inhumans are trying to find this. I guess they're inadvertently in a possession of this object that the Mandarin wants. And these are very short stories. So uh, just quick hits. Looks like they kill the Mandarin at points, and it turns out it's really just a robot. It's very, very, uh, very uh, old school Marvel fashion. I love this. Look at this Jack Kirby splash page with the Mandarin's rings. Oh my gosh, such creative stuff. And this was just super fun. Jack Kirby did a great job of this. And then we get to a point where Jack Kirby has quit Marvel. And this is right here. Uh, this is the, one of his last stories at Marvel. And uh, he quit in the middle of Fantastic Four number 102. So he drew these on the side, but he was drawing Fantastic Four also. I guess he didn't like the way that Stan Lee was kind of like taking credit for everything. This ended up happening with Steve Ditko also. And uh, it left a bad taste in his mouth until he went over to DC. Quit mid-issue. That issue 102 is... is uh, a very uh, controversial issue because the way it was finished, it makes no sense. It's been it, they actually redid it later, also, but you know we can go into that when I when I actually read that in the Fantastic Four volume because it's not in this volume. Uh, but it does then go to one hundred five, which it's taken over by John Romita at this point, who you know he tends to draw Kirby esque at least in the Fantastic Four here. Romita's kind of got his own style when you look over in Spider-Man, but he's definitely trying to mimic a lot of the Kirby art and keep the consistency here, which he does a good job of, to be honest. Um, and so this is an interesting story. I did read this one. I didn't skip over this one because I don't know when this is going to be reprinted in the Fantastic Four. And what happens is Crystal ends up having some problem where she is gonna die if she doesn't get back to the Inhumans and it, it's a very thin storyline to be honest uh, and they get rid of Crystal and she goes back and lives with the Inhumans womp womp poor Johnny all right um and then we get back into this amazing adventures storyline now we've gotten Jack Kirby quitting so who do you bring in Neil Adams and you bring in Roy Thomas to write it and this is actually an excellent story too um so uh Black Bolt uh, is, is looking in uh, America, basically. The, the Inhumans are a little scared that they want to... Uh, their hideaway has been discovered. They don't. They want to try to find somewhere else to try to blend in. Maybe be a little more like the X-Men, I guess. And uh, some cool Neil Adams art. This is a little wonky of a, a neck up at the top panel here. But uh, overall, the, sh the shading, it just... You know, Neil Adams does a, a beautiful job uh, just with shadow and with movement. Um, and Black Bolt gets uh, kidnapped, his memory gets removed, and this is a very weird thing. And Maximus is then trying to take over the Inhumans again. Look at this shadowing again, I just love it. Love this stuff. So we go through, uh, Black Bolt meets up with a kid in here who's like kind of a sidekick in here, and uh, the consistency kind of changes a little bit as, as Gary Conway starts writing it and it chain, changes the storyline direction again uh, even though neil adams is still drawing and the inhumans go after black bolt basically is what comes on in these issues and black bolt is working for these like uh civil rights activists but they're not they're kind of more terrorists <laughs> interesting for modern times to read this um and uh and they're using him basically to uh be somebody uh uh, a bunch of power and it's unclear whether he has his memories or not and this is a, this is very funky stuff in here at this point with the writing um i i miss the jack kirby stuff really but they rescue black bolt they get him back there he is um he doesn't remember that he's not supposed to speak sort of and uh and this kind of continues so there's there's so this ends here really as a storyline and then Gary Conway and Mike Sikwanski start this. I don't even know who Mike Sikwanski is. Obviously, their quality is not as good as Neil Adams or Jack Kirby. Um, and 
it's just this total different storyline where these like uh you know magneto and these his evil band of agents and it's very very magneto twirly mustachey with gary conway writing just kind of take over things so funky change then humans have to fight and Magneto's like using Black Bolt and got his whole, uh, got them all tied up basically. And these, these become full length uh, issues at this point. So you're not doing these little 10 page vignettes anymore. And eventually Black Bolt gets out, the Inhumans get out and they fight Magneto. Uh, it looks like Magneto almost dies or whatnot. Whoops. And uh, apparently this ends them here and eventually they start their own series i know that uh coming on coming right off of this i think doug mensch actually writes it very bizarre ending uh where they all kind of escape and then they say that avengers 95 will fill in the rough gaps between these new sagas and what happens is uh is triton gets out of the bay in avengers 95 this is in the middle of this crease scroll war and they just kind of drop everything in this crease scroll war and then go find black bolt and rescue him and so this is very odd uh here and yes it fills in the gap i guess but i mean it's so convoluted the timing this is this was very poorly done from an editorial perspective to where i just barely understand where this all fits in and it all was going on uh on all counts so that whole stretch between seven and eight even though the seven and eight were pretty good issues i guess it's, it's five six through eight uh, it got murky because it switched tones so drastically in 9 and 10, and there's so many gaps left in there, and this really didn't fill in the gaps well. It didn't didn't help things, I don't think. Uh, very odd stuff. So that's what you get. Um, and then we get our Not Brand X parodies, which I don't, I don't find these funny, to be honest. And so I skim them, uh, but I don't enjoy them like I enjoy the standard Marvel comics. You might could be for you. It's just not for me. And here's some of the Neil Adam backups here. All right. So that, that's about it. I mean, the beginning of the book, Fantastic Four stuff, a lot of that stuff's like, again, just reprinted in a lot of places. Um, I enjoyed reading that Marvel Spotlight or Marvel Superheroes or whatever it was issue. It was very excellent. Barge a good one. As a retrospect, uh, the Jack Kirby Amazing Adventures was just top notch. After that was just good with Neil Adams' art. The story was all right, but went a little shaky downhill after the after Roy Thomas left after that first issue. And the way they tried to tie everything together just kind of didn't work out. The last three issues of this were just really bombed out and uh, and and really were not a good testament to Jack Kirby's work before this. So there you go. There you have it. Overall, uh, enjoyed the read. I'd say for the most part uh, because of the you know breadth of issues in this that were done by uh king jack uh king kirby you uh you got to rate this an eight out of ten even though the ending was a little sour so we'll see how it picks up in the next inhumans volume and we'll also see what picks up in terms of the kill raven volume for amazing adventures i'm very interested in seeing all of that and getting into this early 70s uh stuff where you get real that really that second and third wave of marvel writers coming in Hope you enjoyed the review. Hit the like and subscribe button. If you like my comics, check out my comics too. They're on Amazon, John Della Rose. You can look me up there. Uh, I'd recommend The Cosmic Warrior for you if you're into Jack Kirby stuff. And I will see you guys soon.